People who quit a job in the heat of the moment, what chaos did you leave them to handle? I didn't get a bonus because they felt the overtime I did paid me more than the bonus they gave to everyone else. I didn't know what to say after that, so after a few hours, I offered to get coffee for everyone. I left and never came back or contacted them again. I keep thinking that I should go back with coffee now that I've been gone for 10 years and just act normal. When I was a programmer at an insurance company, one of the longtime programmers had been with the company for nearly 20 years. This guy originally wrote most of the financial system himself, from scratch, and had maintained it with the help of a couple other people. Every month, he did the month-end processing, and every quarter, he did the quarter-end processing. Every year-end? Yep, it was him. There was a change in management a couple of times, and he kept getting treated worse and worse. He was being treated unfairly, asked to do unreasonably more work than he was already doing, getting thrown under the bus, that kind of thing. He finally had enough, and one morning he came in, walked to the manager's office and quit, then walked out the door. In the aftermath, it took a team of four other people months and months to get things back together and to a point where things were serviceable. I got stabbed in the shoulder while working as a bookmaker, or betting shop manager. I was the only key holder, and while the paramedics were tending to me, the area manager was on the phone asking me to open the store the next day. I closed shop for the day, came back once I got out of the hospital, put my keys in the safe, and left my notice on the desk. The store didn't open for three days while they sorted a field manager. I worked for a landscape company doing new installs. Our owner was cheap with a bad habit of constantly biting off more than he could chew. One year, he asked if we wanted any part of a school project in a city we didn't live in, over two hours away, and we said no. He said that was fine and would just bid on one school for his crew who lived in that area. Instead, he bid on multiple schools and got three of them. Obviously, none of us are happy about this, and he claimed that he'd put us up in hotels so we wouldn't have to commute. He never did. The work itself sucked, way more than a crew our size could handle, and the owner's brother did absolutely nothing. He was supposed to be the project manager slash supervisor, but literally all he did was play Clash of Clans on his phone and yell at people about not being fast enough. After a few days, I was done. I'd grown sick of the job anyway, but this project really sealed the deal. Having to commute four plus hours a day and then physically destroy myself was taking a toll fast. I woke up Friday morning, called the owner, told him I quit and to stop taking more work than he can manage. He blew up, but I just hung up the phone and went back to sleep. Two weeks later, I get a call from him. He's begging me to come back because after I quit, two other guys did too. The project is now woefully behind schedule and he's going to get fined if things don't pick up and get finished. I told him he should have thought of that before he bit off more than he could chew and expected a small crew to do it all in a short time frame. He got quiet and then asked if a 50 cent raise would get me back. Uh, no, that was the last time I ever heard from him and I can't find his company website anymore. I was an 18-year-old assistant manager at a big pizza franchise. I'd been working open to close for two weeks straight because the new GM went on vacation right after taking over the store. When she got back from her vacation, she only worked a half day. I opened and still closed. Then she changed the schedule and took two days off. This was the last straw on top of a ton of other crap piled over a year. Multiple new GMs, crappy district manager, awful store politics. I was alone during an unusually large lunch rush and was just done with everyone's crap. I had a make line full of orders, phones ringing, oven full of pizza, orders to be picked up, and a massive bunch of dough sitting on the prep table. I said screw it. I shut the oven off, walked out, and locked the door. Didn't call anyone to let them know. It would be hours before the evening driver would roll in. No prep for the day, no dough for the day, except for the blob I'm sure would become a massive mess after rising for hours. A double deck oven with both belts full of pies wasted, and what was probably shaping to be a $1,200 lunch out the window. I hope she was well rested after her time off. Shoppers Drug Mart. I had simply asked for better hours after working ridiculous late night hours for over a year. Instead, they hired a new guy and gave him the exact hours I asked for and then had me train him. So when training wasn't going very well because the new guy was super slow, they blamed me for it. Now, I had a good standing with everyone at this store, but I didn't need shoppers, and I let a lot of crap slide every day. So again, when I asked for a vacation that I deserved because I was never sick and punctual as heck, I was denied it. And the next day, the manager had four weeks of vacation set. 
So to make it up to me, they offered me all these insane overtime shifts for the next three weeks. So I waited for the frozen deliveries to arrive that same day. The boss was packing up to go home, and when he said goodnight to me, I said, but who's going to do this frozen delivery? He laughed and said, you are. So I replied, nope. And he became super cross, so I started laughing. What are you laughing about, he says. So I said, screw you, I quit. Now, there was no one to finish the night shift. He immediately asks for the uniform. I said, no, screw you, I quit. I had never done that before or since. Uniform went in the trash. I always worked the clothes shift at a fast food joint. My managers loved to hand out citations for any little thing. The policy was three strikes and you're out. I had two strikes and was told to clean up the entire front end and bathroom in an hour or risk getting a third strike. To put things in perspective, I had to close the register, count the money, clean up the front end, restock everything, sweep and mop the floors, and clean the entire bathroom, including the toilets, for basically $8.05. I walked into the bathroom just to see what to expect. It looked like someone had finished projectile pooping all over the toilet and then decided to pee next to the sink. I knew I wouldn't be able to do everything in an hour and that I would get fired regardless. So I took my uniform off and walked home shirtless. I worked as an engineer at the mill and was responsible for operation and process adjustment of certain pieces of equipment. I was able to make it work better than specified results, but my managers required more production, less power, etc. So at this point, the machines reached its capacity, and further pushing it was risky and a huge amount of investment was needed. I was told by the higher-ups that you didn't even try to do it, only said some lame excuses. I was done with this and called to the manufacturer of this equipment. Long story short, instead of instructions and advice, they sent me a job offer for local service rep. After I quit the mill, my ex-colleagues tried to push the machine above the limits and successfully broke it and stopped the production for a couple of weeks. I worked as a small engine repair tech for a larger company. I'm also in the National Guard. I had gotten hurt and needed physical therapy, and one or two days a month I would have to miss because of an extended drill weekend. Well, my boss didn't like that, and she decided that she would punish me by making me stay later than everyone else. She was punishing me for going to physical therapy for a workplace injury and for being a soldier. Now, you may be thinking, having to stay late to keep up on your work doesn't sound like that much of a punishment. Normally, you would be right, but trust me. She was doing a lot more to make sure it was a punishment. Well, one day after being told I was not given approval for the one day of vacation I had asked for three months in advance to go see the eclipse and generally being treated like a slave, I was like, why am I doing this to myself? And clocked out at the end of my shift. That next Monday after drill weekend, I showed up, packed up all my tools and took off. My boss started freaking out when she saw what I was doing. I left and found out that me leaving cost her over $100,000 because she had to ship my workload to another state to get another shop to work on them. That meant she needed to pay to ship them and then pay to ship them back. And since her shop didn't do any of the actual work, she never saw any money for any of the repairs. It was like 80 riding lawnmowers. I had a job as a fairly niche field service engineer in IT. Started off covering my local area, which was fine. Maybe an hour traveling time to my most remote site tops. Then they lost an engineer in my adjacent territory, and I had to cover that too. This put my travel time up to about two and a half hours each way. That wasn't great, but it was temporary, allegedly. Then they lost another engineer, and guess what? I had to cover that area too. That meant I was having to do up to four hours hours driving each way just to get to a site, and then they expected me to put in a full 8 hour day. I mentioned this to my manager and pointed out that if I was pulling multi-day jobs at a site 4 hours away, it would be far better for them to put me up in a hotel, but they said, nah as it was unusual for me to do multi-day installs. Anyway, a month or so later, I was expected to put in a complete new system at a site, spec'd up to four full days to do it. High-profile client. And I basically told my manager I needed a hotel. 
They pushed back. It's only four days. You'll be fine. Just charge them the travel time as worked hours. Which is fine, but I was salaried, and they were the ones invoicing the client, so no overtime for me. Anyway, on the second day, I arrived at nearly lunchtime after a massive accident on the motorway held me up for four hours, and was greeted by the client chewing me out. I thought, screw this, packed my tools, left the site with their old system ripped out, and a pile of unopened boxes of new kit, switched off my mobile, and drove to the head office. I parked close enough to the main entrance that the car operated the automatic doors, went into reception and told the receptionist, very politely, it wasn't her fault, that I quit. All my gear was in the car and here are my keys, phone and pass. Then walked out and got a cab home. I found out from a friend that they lost that client, which was one of their main ones, even after my manager basically spent the rest of the week installing the kit on his own without any documentation, since I'd written the spec and accidentally kept it. I spent some time working at a gas station where my supervisor would take about 20 smoke breaks a day while demanding that the rest of us work harder. After several days of this and my boss not doing anything about it, I quit in the middle of a pizza order rush. Oh boy, let me tell you about my last day of Walmart. It's Monday morning, my day off, and I was pulling out of my doctor's office after getting blood work done when I receive a call from my manager. Let's just call her Demon Queen. Demon Queen asks me to come into work because of two call-offs. Thinking that I didn't have anything else planned and could use the overtime, I agreed. I informed her over the phone it would take me an hour to get home, dress, and drive to work. All I heard from her was an annoyed, Fine, just get here. One hour later, I arrived at work. Just as I was getting to the deli where I work, my manager, who was behind the counter by herself, starts yelling at me for being late, in front of not one, not two, but a line of customers. I attempt to remind her of our conversation, but she cuts me off, tosses her apron, and storms out of the deli. I'm forced to shrug it off, apologize to the customers, and get to work. Later, I have a customer walk to the deli and ask about our rotisserie chicken, something not uncommon. I explain it'll be over an hour before they're ready, and suggest driving five minutes north to the other Walmart. He nods, thanks me, and walks away towards the front. I thought nothing of it, and continued to cook popcorn chicken. Five minutes later, the same customer comes back with none other than the demon queen herself, who's asking me about the rotisserie chicken. I once again attempt to explain how long the chicken has left to cook and the suggestion I made. No sooner am I finished speaking than she berates me for being lazy and telling a customer to go elsewhere. I ask what else is there I could do, as I couldn't make the oven cook faster. Her next words stick to this day. I want you to do your job or you can kiss it goodbye. A moment of pause from everyone. Zoe and May have been listening in the entire time as well as the customers they were helping. I ponder, then smile. Okay. I apologize to Zoe and May, wish them the best of luck, and walk out of the deli towards my manager. I stop in front of her, take off my apron, kiss it, say goodbye, and walk out of the store. I still have my name badge and hat to this day. I worked 25 years for a large company in the sales division. I was making six figures and had earned my role as VP of the West Coast. My plan was to stick around to retirement, but then we got a new president, and the new president was a jerk to everyone. I saw one sales guy walk up all excited and offer a handshake to meet him. The president didn't shake the extended hand and instead said, I can't believe you came here without polishing your shoes. The president gave a directive for me to stop hiring people with business or sales experience and to just start hiring attractive men and women because in his words, their good looks will sell product better than the educated words of a veteran salesperson. Plus, they're young and work cheaper. I went along with this request and made two such hires. Then the next request came along. Tell me, who is the worst member of your team right now? I explained that my team was number one in the company and that we're all doing well. But the weakest one would have to be one eight-year employee who had had a bad year last year. He was making less frequent calls and the quality of calls was dropping. I had to place him on PIP to improve in three months. And he did. He busted his butt, worked long hours and weekends, and moved into the number one spot on my team. At the end of the three months, the president calls me to discuss the PIP. I explain the great progress and that I want to release him from the PIP because he's on track now. 
The reply was, well, there's probably other things wrong with him anyway, so terminate him and document it. Make sure to hire a young, attractive person as a replacement. I quit on the spot with zero days notice, unusual for a white collar job, and told him to do his own dirty work. Now I work as a high school teacher. I worked in shipping and receiving for a health food store. Over the past five days, everyone else had quit, including supervisors and department heads. I was working a frozen shipment, my regular job. Dairy came in and cheese came in. A little bit over $130,000. Huge fancy cheese and whole wheels. A large generally organic dairy shipment. I refused to sign anything. GM demanded I sign and put it away. Signing was already out of my pay grade. Those numbers made it way out of my pay grade. He then demanded I put it all away. It would have taken the rest of the shift for my own work. I just quit. Screw it. I heard that he signed it and it all went to waste. He ended up getting fired. I've only done this once in my life, but it was a really crazy situation. My first professional job was an event planner for a small business, like three people. I was 24 and I worked there for a year. After about five months, my boss became extremely abusive. She would make snide little remarks about my terrible skills or time management or organizing. She stopped talking to me and would basically act like I wasn't there unless it was to criticize me for something. One day, she asked me if I implemented a new filing system she had learned from the bank she used to work at. I replied no, as she hadn't yet shown me how to do so. She said with a stack of papers in her hand, well, I guess giving you these would just be useless then. Another example is that she would find little ways in which I was being purred or snide in some way, usually something completely BS, and would make me sign forms saying we had meetings about my behavior and listed all the things we would do to change it and help me grow. Like I worked for a big corporation or something with an HR department, not a private office with literally one boss. If I argued why I wasn't doing so, she made me sign something saying I was refusing training. I literally have no idea who those papers were for. Things like that. It made me so paranoid and unhappy, I spent many lunches crying in my car, and many nights completely stressed out after work. I couldn't understand what had changed, and felt so stupid and helpless. My coworker had just left, so it was just the two of us, and I gave my two weeks because the thought of being alone in an office with her was unbearable. As soon as I left her office, she called her mom to complain about me ditching her and talked about how happy she would be with me gone, all while I was about 10 feet away in another room with the doors open. I lost it, got up from my desk and grabbed my purse, went to her office and told her I was leaving for good, right this minute. I was shaking and terrified, and she was furious. She told me, good luck finding another job in this town, I know everybody. Spoiler alert, I did. The kicker? What I didn't know at the time was that my coworker had been feeding her BS the whole time. When it started to affect how I was being treated and I would complain or talk about it, guess who also told my boss all of that? Yup. With many embellishments, of course. I had zero experience with people like that and overlooked many clues, like how she would stay after work a lot to finish her assignments, when in reality she was staying to tattle on me. I was just so new to the real world and naive. I found all of this out a few months later from one of her friends I ran into who she had also screwed over in some way. It made me stronger, and after I left, my boss had to deal with scrambling to find people to do all of her events, and I'm sure it was hell. I felt happy about that at first, but now that I'm 10 years older, I can see things differently. She definitely could have handled it better, but it was her first boss job too, and she maybe had some things to learn herself. I quit from a gaming site I used to write for. This all happened in the span of two months. The new owner made us writers lose all credibility by writing unedited articles on his own and posting them freely. And they were the most widely ridiculous and racist pieces I'd ever read. In one of them, he said women only bought the Wii because they used the Wii mode as a vibrator. It just made the rest of us look bad. He fired my friend simply because he didn't like him. He tried to claim my friend kept our review copy of Skyward Sword. There was more stuff that he did that I can't remember. My father died in December of that year. I informed everyone. I had also lost internet access for a while because my provider was switching the way their routers and stuff connected. I had too much going on at the time to deal with that. When I connected to the McDonald's Wi-Fi one day, I read a barrage of emails from the new owner, all amounting to, where are you? And why aren't you writing anything? 
I emailed him and CC'd everyone on the writing staff and told him he could go screw himself. 90% of the writing staff followed. Five writers quit that day and people took notice. The site never recovered. And today it only exists as a landing page and hub for one podcast that just refuses to die. After that, the owner took to stalking the guy who hired most of his writing staff, online harassment, and most recently, he hacked the previous owner's email and stole his Destiny 2 review code. He's still out there being a jerk, but I only hear about it since I have him blocked on all social media. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.